Welcome back, you beautiful people. Rules are there to be broken. Well, only a few of them. If you break some of them, you might get in trouble with the law and you do not want to do that, do you? No, but I'm pretty guilty for breaking some of these rules. And that is, uh, well, it works for me. Twenty-seven, dude. Two psi less. Neil's mum. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Whilst he's taking care of his business over there, dropping your bike drive side down. Now, this is a rule you shouldn't break, but if you are going to do it, like I do sometimes, make sure you put it down gently, because if you just throw it down like he did, desperately needing the loo, oh, he could have smashed his rear mech. He could have put a rocket right on there, bend his mech hanger, which will put your gears out of sync, and that is super annoying. Even worse is if you just throw it down, you don't even know, you could get one of these caught up in there and next time you pick your bike up and ride off, you could rip off a rear mech. A bit like one of our cameramen. He did that on a shoot, AKA Jack. He put his bike down, a stick got caught up, he picked his bike up, he rode off and he ripped his rear mech off. He was one hour walk away from the car. You don't want to do that. Right, he's coming back. All right. Oh man, something is not right. Something is definitely not right on my bike. Um, no, is that that? No. Yeah, that's it, rubbing. Multi-tool. Oh Nick, have you got a multi-tool I could borrow? Yeah, cheers mate, thanks. Oh, he's at it again, breaking the rules. Now this rule right here, he's putting your bike upside down. Now this is one I actually do in a race scenario when I need to be quick. I need to get my tires off, I need to get my wheel out, I need to fix my puncture or whatever. If there's some mechanical, I can do it. But when it comes to doing it on the trail, then I would highly recommend that you kind of stay away from this because especially if you've got a riding computer, like my Garmin's down there. My Garmin, his Garmin over there, is getting scratched up in the dirt. And also, it does scuff up your brake lever clamps, your grips, you could ruin a grip. Your saddle, you could rip it when you pull it back up and over. It's a rule that it can be broken, but you should be careful when you do it. Oh, he's coming back. Like that. Ah, cheers, Nick. Oh, feeling a bit peckish. Peckish. <laughs> I swear I had a bar in anyway. Anyway. Yes, better. Thanks. I'll look after it, Nick. Cheers, mate. All right, let's get on the trail down. <laughs> Right, before I hit the trail, guys, I'm gonna just do a quick bolt check because you never can be too safe. Go on, dude, hurry up, man! 15. Neil's mum? 15 Neil's mum? No. What is it? Neutral magnetic? No. Chop, chop! Negative microns? No. Anyway. <sighs> yep. 15 nutmeg? No. All right. Dude, it's 15. Nini minis. Oh, right, that's done. Daylight's burning, man. Get ready. Hang on. Follow me. I know this trail like the back of my hand. <laughs> Now I'm guilty for this one, and that is kind of back in the day over tightening bolts on the bike, especially when it comes to the stereo up the top. I don't really want that moving when it comes to a slope style situation where I don't want the bars to twist on a landing. But over the years, I have calibrated my wrist to the right Newton meters, but you can never be too cautious. The numbers are here for a purpose. The manufacturers put it here so that it is safe to tighten it up to 15 Newton meters, not Neil's mum of torque within that pivot point right there. Don't over tighten them, because if you do, especially your rear axle, you won't be able to get it out and you would have to take it to a bike shop and it'll cost you quite a few pennies to fix it. Oh man, tell you what, there's something wrong with my bike. 
I think my tires are too, too hard, too hard for the terrain I'm riding. So the dirt, yeah, definitely need to do my tire pressure, man. It's all about those minuscule gains when out there killing the comms, dude. Yeah. Always ride with one of these in my bag. Uh, 29 PSI. Let's get rid of some of those. All right, 27, dude. Two PSI less. Let's go. <laughs> what is he playing at? Now, this is a rule that is kind of a gray area and that's tire pressure but when it comes to a rocky situation like this where I don't want to jeopardize myself getting a puncture I'm not there racing I'm not all about the gains put a little bit more pressure on those tires just to make sure you stop yourself from getting a snake bike puncture out there on rocky terrain it's not about racing man conserve your tires not like that guy <laughs> is very bad for the trail it damages the trail very quickly yes i agree with that but it's a rule that pretty much nearly every single one of us do and that is lock up the back wheel ever so slightly which causes you to skid now that is when you happens when you want to scrub off the speed really quickly now i'm saying don't go out there and go and skid to your heart's content on the trail because it's really bad you shouldn't break that rule but when it comes to a situation where you need a skid it's gonna happen don't skid here, that was actually quite pointless. You don't need to skid there. Maybe there when you're coming down the fire road really quick and you need to get into it. But, hey, we do like to skid. If you do, do in the car park. Man, I need to get my bike set up to its absolute prime, dog. Make sure everything's tight. Right, make sure that's in like levelish ground. Let me get this out. Oh, bang on, dude. Oh, oh. Yeah, 36, dog. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Suspension, right now. High speed compression. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bang on. Oh, yeah, look at that. Tinkering on your bike is good to get the ultimate setup on your rig is perfect. But if you're following racing and seeing how many spaces you can have under your stem, how many clicks on your suspension, tire pressures, the rake on your bars, the degree of your, your levers and all that, and going in a crank length, you can get lost in a lot of it. I rarely do any changes to my bike on the first ride, and I wait till I feel like there's a thing or two I need to change, and then I will change it to suit the terrain I'm riding. You can spend hours. You can actually get lost into setting up your bike more so than riding your bike. in the sunshine at once. And there's a rule here that I tend to break more so than none. And that is leaving my rotors on my wheels when I'm traveling with my bicycle via in a plane or in a car. Now that has a tendency to bend your rotors. So when you get to a location, your rotors, you'll find a, they look like Pringle chips and you don't want that to happen. Now removing them can eliminate this, but some bike storage bags do have a compartment where the wheel would fit in and protect that disc from bending. But some of us travel with boxes and removing the disc is gonna eliminate that. Another one is, it's so easy and common, is one of these to stick into your brake pads, to stop them from getting squashed together. And when you take your bike out the car or out of your real bag, you'll have your pads squashed really tight together. And that is never good, is it? You can go to your local bike shop and they probably have a drawer with loads of these little brake spaces inside them. So grab yourself a few, put them in the car, put them in your toolbox, or even leave them in your travel bag. So there we have it, a few rules that we shouldn't break, but we do anyway. But if you are gonna break these rules, make sure you uh, tread with caution. Make sure you do it and you know you're doing it so you don't do any damage to your bike or to the trail. Do not go and skid out there on the trail. I highly recommend you don't do that because people frown upon that quite a lot. Let us know in the comments down below if I've missed out a few. 
help out the community with a few of those rules that they shouldn't be breaking. Anyway, until now, until then, see you later. I'm gonna go have a cup of tea. Still at the top of the trail and I've got a long way to go. Ciao.